Hello everybody and welcome back to the Azrent where I will just go on about whatever I feel like and this time I've been playing that Nintendo Switch Sports and I thought this time it'd be fun to rank the experiences overall while also addressing some thoughts on the game that I have as a whole. So let's do it. There's six sports in this package which is considerably less than the last few entries with like Wii Sports Resort. But they're six decent entries. I wouldn't say any of them are particularly bad. So just know that when I go from worst to best here, the lower games are not necessarily bad. Just not as good as the others. With that said, six sports in total. Let's start at number six. My least favorite of the Nintendo Switch sports is tennis. For some reason, tennis just doesn't work for me the same way that it did in Wii Sports the original. It felt a lot more responsive in that game compared to this one, which is interesting because according to the tutorials that pop up during loading screens, this game is trying to give you more refined control over your tennis ball. You're supposed to be able to do things like aim left and right, apply topspin and backspin, maybe even lob the ball. But Whenever I play, it just feels like all those things are happening randomly, no matter how hard I actively try to make that work. So, a lot of times I just end up losing because I feel like my character isn't responding the way that I'm swinging the Wii Remote. Which is interesting. Also, I mean, it kind of goes twofold for tennis, because you're playing a doubles match with a clone of yourself, and you have to control both at the same time which was in the original Wii Sports, but that was just a single-player option, not a requirement. But that means you have twice as many chances to mess up on a game that doesn't seem to take the inputs the way that I would expect it to. You got your front person and your back person who could both cost you the game. Uh, now that said, it's kind of funny that I'm bringing this up because I'm recording this the day after I did a stream of the game. And in that game, I was able to win without so much as looking at the screen because I was doing a bit. There's a stream highlight posted for that if you're interested, called Goodminton. But, nonetheless, most of the time I feel like the game isn't working for me, so that is what puts it at the absolute bottom of my list. Number 5. Volleyball. So I think a bit more highly of volleyball than other people I've seen talk about the game because it's not at the bottom of my list, I can at least say that much. That honor wins a tennis. Volleyball is interesting because it's all about the timing of your different swings and you know, the game is constantly informing you. You're going back and forth between bumping, setting, jumping, spiking, and blocking. And all of those are simple swings, but if you don't time it right and aim it right, then you're going to have a harder time of thing. And unlike tennis, you actually end up playing with a second actual person in your doubles match. Who would have thought? I mean, it's good because, you know, the second person has to do totally different things from the first person there. Uh, what's interesting is that the game does give you some modicum of control beyond the motion controls. While the game will continue to do the Wii Sports tradition of auto-moving your character to where you're most likely going to need to go, you can use the control stick to finagle it yourself in volleyball. So if you're trying to block a shot and you think they're going to go right, you can move your character to the right <laughs> before you jump up and block it. And... Same thing when you're trying to bump to return the opposing team's spike. If it's moving slow enough, then the auto move will do the job and get you to where you need to be to bump it. But if the team pulls off a really powerful fast spike, you might need to manually aim yourself there. So it adds that layer. Oh, also I like that because timing is key in the game, it's always informing you that you were a little early or a little late, and there's some leeway. You can hit the ball early and still get away with not missing the ball. But it's good because it allows you to actively work to get better at the game. Unlike tennis where I have no feedback whatsoever, just the supposed loading screen tips. That's what edges it above tennis for me. Let's move into number four. 
rounding out the bottom three, it's actually Chumbara. <laughs> I was looking forward to this one. I really love Wii Sports Resort's take on swordplay. It was very fun and wild and frantic. And let me remind you, being number four on this list does not make you a bad game. It, like, we're entering really good territory now. First off, this game does build on Wii Sports Resort. Instead of just having the one giant sword, which I do kind of miss how ludicrously big those swords were. But nonetheless, you get a bit more gameplay depth because they included three different sword types with the regular, guard sword, and twin sword. And you can play any of them at any time, and so can your opponent. And they're balanced in such a way that you could theoretically win in any matchup. So, while I do feel it's missing the charm of the original Wii Sports Resort, it does work for what it is. Uh, it's nice and simple, lets you calibrate your sword anytime with the X button. Guarding is as simple as holding down the trigger and aiming accordingly. But there have been some matches against random people online. Maybe I'm just bad at this version of the game, but I feel like there's some times where the opponent will flail and I'll have absolutely no way of reading what way I need to block them. And so I just get pushed back and inevitably lose the match. But it's hard to say if that's me or the game. It hasn't happened a ton because I've been playing the top three sports a lot more than this one. But uh, it's my list. So if I'm failing at the game, I'm going to put it lower. Uh, the other thing that Wii Sports Resort had was additional modes for sword play. It wasn't just the duels. We also had Speed Slice and the single-player focused mob mode called Showdown, where you'd have to fight hordes of the enemies on the island. That was fun. I'll probably revisit that at some point. It's not, again, I'm not too sad that it's missing here because they make up for it with the three different sword types, and that's still more options than a lot of these other minigames offer. But if I can say one more thing, this pertains more to the game on the whole, but this is a good spot to bring it up. Kambara in Wii Sports Resort used to take place on this outdoor arena platform and you can see it in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate if you play on the Woohoo Island stage. It travels around and uh, it will visit that stadium at one point in time. Right, so it used to take place on that outdoor arena and it felt like a grand spectacle with people watching that outdoor arena and you falling into an actual body of water instead of just a pool contained in a stadium. It's made me notice that in Nintendo Switch Sports, the venues are all indoor, at least currently. I, I do believe that when they add golf, they're not going to have a way to have it indoors, but golf is not in the game at present. So, everything else. Chambara is in an indoor arena at a pool. Volleyball, indoor arena. Tennis, indoor arena. Obviously, bowling's indoor, but... Like, that's the trend here. Everything's been moved to a more confined indoor space, which makes sense from a world-building standpoint because then it doesn't matter what the weather is. You can still visit these sports facilities. But I do miss that element of Woohoo Island where you would be outside doing all this stuff. Like, if you wanted to play Frisbee, you would go to the beach with your dog, or there was Frisbee golf or you had the whole golf course. Uh, who could forget cycling around the entire island? Sword play was outdoors. Basketball was outdoors. Bowling was still inside, of course. So, a couple exceptions. But it really felt much more grand in Wii Sports Resort as a result of just having the open world space environment. And when I say open, I don't mean open world like open world game. I mean, you know, open like design wise it's an open space there's the sense that you can really move around it so anyway that's just a little thing about switch sports that i've noticed in large part due to chambara so now back to your regularly scheduled rankings we've entered the top three territory and rounding us out at number three my bronze medal winner if you will is badminton which, again, as I mentioned earlier, is really more like good mitten. But the top three games here are all fantastic through and through. Now, to me, badminton is just the better version of tennis in this game. 
All right, uh, these rounds can go on for a while. And you're constantly on edge looking for your opponent to slip up so that you can strike. Because just like tennis and volleyball, it's all in the timing of the swing. And if your opponent messes up their timing, well then, the ball is going to glow dark blue, and that gives you a chance to pull off a special spike that would be really hard to return. Also, if your opponent messes up the timing a lot, they might even fall down and be totally helpless against your next shot. So it's all about trying to manipulate your opponent to run around a bunch, get them to mess up their swing timing. They're trying to do the same to you. So badminton creates some of the longest matches that I've seen in this game, and my arm can get legitimately tired just from playing it. Like, it, it's constant action. And, I mean, that's not even the half of it. Let's talk about the precision of the control in this game. Of course, Nintendo Switch's Joy-Con are gyro controls and not proper pointer controls like on the Wii. But they do include the instant recalibration option, where you point at the center of the screen and press X. This is something that tennis should have had. I don't know why it doesn't. There, you don't do anything with the buttons in tennis at all. But here, badminton has it, so you can constantly do the accurate shot. Right, after a swing, if you need to fix it, it's right there. It's instant. It gives you total control. Not only that, but the ZR button allows you to do a drop shot, which, again, is more precise control and helps with the whole manipulate what your opponent is doing thing. So, I wish that every sport had the recalibration option in some form. Not all of them do. And yeah, that's where we're at badminton. It's just exciting, adrenaline pumping goodness. And I will happily play it over this game's version of tennis any day. Alright, now of course we're down to the last two games in Nintendo Switch Sports. At number two. I'm honestly surprised that this ended up at number two and not number one, but bowling is my number two game. It is a classic. It carries over from Wii Sports 1 and Wii Sports Resort and all that, and it's still good. I'm still figuring out the exact twisting motions to get the ball to do what I want, but it works, it's responsive, it's bowling. And like Chambara, bowling is one of the few games here that has additional options, at least if you're playing locally or online with friends, then you can do special mode where the lanes have obstacles. And that is a carryover from previous installments, but it's always good to see it back because it really makes you play around with the spin and figure things out. You cannot do that online with randoms, only online with friends or with your local friends, but at least it's there. The 100 pin challenge is sadly missing, which is a bit of a disappointment, but also 100 pin bowling is just 10 pin bowling, so it's not the biggest deal. What is a slightly bigger deal about bowling in this game is that when you play online with randoms, you have to do elimination style. And this is often created times where... The opponent will just outclass you in the game very quickly. And so you'll have to finish an entire three frames when it's not even mathematically possible to catch up to your opponent. And that's a very defeating feeling. Right? It is very rare that they will mess up and ruin their shot just so you can make a comeback. So you're very quickly going to figure out if you're going to make it through the game or not, and you're stuck playing a good chunk of it. And three frames doesn't sound like a lot. Like, if you're going to lose, at least you're only playing three frames. But these three frames go by very slowly because you have to wait for all 16 players to finish. I feel like I'm always the first one to get my ball down the lane, and then everyone else takes their sweet time. And I'm just not sure... What's going on with that? I, I feel like bowling doesn't need to take as long as it does. That said, it is the best way to grind up points, mind you, so that's why I've played a lot of it, is because if you do get pretty far, and I am able to get pretty far a decent amount of the time, then you get the highest point payout for unlocking cosmetics, which 
Hey, that's nice. So, yeah, Falling, classic staple of Wii Sports. Glad to see it here in any capacity. Mostly does its job, and that alone puts it at number two. But number one, my god, obviously you know what it is by process of elimination, but I am very, very surprised to see this at number one. The Soccer. Holy moly, the soccer. This is my favorite soccer game in any video game ever. I played a little bit of the Mario Strikers series, and I'm not, you know, I'm not enthralled with it. I'm not particularly looking forward to Battle League when that comes out on Switch. I might even skip that one altogether. And yeah, plenty of games have tried to do the soccer thing. I've never been a FIFA guy. Well, I think they just changed that name. That's a whole different subject. Um, well, it's, Rocket League is okay. I've played a bit of that. But that's also very different because of the RC cars. Although this, is, this does definitely have similarities to Rocket League because the ball is huge and they're all fighting to kick it down the field and get it into the goal. It's very Rocket League-esque, but you have no RC car. You are, in fact, a humanoid. I do specify humanoid because they're introducing non-human characters into the game. As of the time of this recording, you can unlock the squirrel body and who knows what else down the line. Anyway, soccer. It's frantic, but the game gives you full control. This is not just, oh, time your swing correctly like all the other games. Or twist it just the right amount like in bowling. Now this takes some strategy and chaos ensues, and there's a lot going on. Like, think about this. This is the one game in this package where you move your character with a control stick. They give you that full liberty. Motion control is just for kicking in different directions or doing a diving headbutt. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everything else is, like, normally controlled. Move with the control stick. Look around with the right stick. There's no other game in this package where you really get to look around at things in a full 360 camera. Um, what else is there? Press the A button to request a pass. Use the ZR button to initiate a pass. Passing can be a bit finicky because I believe it just aims for whoever's closest to you at the time. So, I guess it's not total, total control. But you can at least... Try to pass it off to someone. And, like, you know what? I actually really like what they did with the Golden Ball. After one team scores two points either side, a, the ball will become a Golden Ball worth two points. If the winning team that has two points scores it, they'll get a score of four. And any time a team hits a score of four, the game ends in a knockout. So that way, unlike bowling, you're not waiting the rest of the time for a game that you're inevitably going to lose. They mercy kill it. And that is great. It allows you to dust yourself off from your loss and move on to the next match. Or if you're the winning team, it allows you to secure your victory and move on to the next match. Right? Now, of course, the losing team could score the golden ball and then end up taking the lead back and the game keeps going, but it's more evenly matched then because they closed that gap. They earned their way back in to continue the time limit. And that's not even to mention the sudden death where the goal opens wider and it goes on overtime for a while. I don't know exactly how long overtime is, but it does eventually run out if no one is scoring and then the game will officially end in a draw. But, nice for those tiebreakers. So, yeah, Nintendo says that in the summer they're going to add support for leg strap in regular soccer matches and not just the shootout mode. And I didn't care about that at first. I thought, well, soccer has always been my least favorite sport in any of these types of games, so I'm probably not going to play it much, and so that update doesn't do anything for me. But it ended up being my favorite sport in this game, so now I'm actively looking forward to that, just to try that out. <laughs> There'll be a new take on this new version of soccer that I really heckin' enjoy. I mean, that's, that's what this list comes down to. It's 
all my personal enjoyment, and I have had the most fun trying to breed my teammates and drive that ball down the field. I've also had the chance to play online with friends, and man, that is just as wild. Ah, the online with friends has some weird limitations, but I've already ranted about this long enough, and I've gotten through my rankings. So, I'll let you figure out what those limitations are, but oh my, it's it's got the Clubhouse 51 games problem. If you've seen any issues with that online and what you're able to play based on how many people are in the lobby, it's very similar, but it's worse here because there was only six mini games to begin with. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, I've spent a lot more time on Nintendo Switch Sports than I ever expected to. I've unlocked every cosmetic item to date just by playing online a bunch. So I'm looking forward to that leg strap update for soccer, and I'm also looking forward to that golf update. I'm going to make a prediction that if I were to rank the golf in this game, it would probably end up as number three in between bowling and badminton, because I liked the golf in the other Wii games, but Obviously, it's very hard to predict that, because I haven't played it yet. I haven't even seen real footage of it. I need to see how well its motion controls work, if it's going to be as responsive as badminton, or if it's just going to blow like tennis. And also, the other thing about my top placing sports, that they have a lot more single-player offerings, like bowling is okay to play by yourself. And golf is going to be that same way. Like, that's a game you could totally solo and just go for a best score. And most of my friends are online. We don't get to play together all the time. So I do value the single-player side of things in these games. So that's why I think golf could crack my top three. But, again, we'll see. Time will tell all whether it's on par or not. <laughs> anyway. Let me know what you think about the Nintendo Switch Sports, maybe how you'd rank them down below, because I'm here, I'm listening, and you've listened to the Azrant.